we have converse when we have conversations about bowings, they're typically about bow direction, up bows and down bows. And I've even been in orchestras where friendships have been lost over bowings, but there are so many other things to think about when it comes to bowings. And in this video, I'm gonna be going over bow hair usage. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you a couple of exercises that I use in my classroom, and you can use them too to get your students to start thinking about wrist flexion and not wrist In most cases, when I work with students, it's way easier to get them to play loud than to play soft. And if you want to explore the softer dynamics and really increase the total dynamic range, it really helps to use less bow hair. When students start to play softer and softer and softer, they get scared. But if they just use some wrist flexion, they can use more bow speed. And since there's less contact with the bow hair and the string, you know, the total area, they can play softer with better tone and play more confidently. When you introduce this concept to your students, you have to first make sure that they have proper wrist mobility when they're holding their bows. Now, one thing I need to clear up is when we refer to wrist mobility, it's a little confusing because we use the term pronation quite a bit. And as an orchestra teacher, I'll be the first to admit that I've used this term incorrectly. And I'll bet that I've even used it incorrectly on this channel out in the public. But pronation just means that your palm are down. This is prone. And supination means that your palms are up or supine. And as we apply torque to the string and we're rotating our wrists anti-clockwise, that's pronation. But when we set up our students and ask them to pronate, you know, what we're really asking for is ulnar deviation to prevent the overload or the unwanted tension on the ulnar fibrocardial complex. Okay, that's a lot of words, but long story short, we want the students to push their wrist out when they down bow and pull their wrist up when they up bow, right? Okay, good. Start introducing this to their concept and you can even do some of the Suzuki stretches if you like just to make sure that they have good wrist mobility. But at this age, most of your students, they should be injury free and have decent mobility. You know, There might be some competitive gymnasts in your orchestra and they're springing off their hands and they have some issues here, but for the most part, they should have enough mobility to tilt the bow hair. The problem isn't necessarily the mobility. The problem is when we put the bow on our hands the students tense up and it limits our range of motion. So the first thing that you want to do is check the bow hands and make sure that your students have curved fingers. All of them are curved, including the thumb. And the tension usually occurs in the pinky. You can try this right now. Look, relax your hand and use some flexion and extension. Now straighten the pinky out and try the flexion extension again. Is it as easy? No, it's a lot harder, right? So double check those bow hands and it's going to make this exercise a lot easier. The first thing that you want to do is have your students set the bow in the middle of the bow and just have them flatten out the bow hair and tilt the bow hair using wrist flexion. Have them do this a few times to get used to the mechanics. Once they are comfortable with that, you can try at the frog and set it up again at the tip. And when they're at the frog and the tip, you know, and they're extended with their wrists, you can see that it makes the flexion process a little trickier, right? If they're not relaxed, they might have some trouble. So try to get them to relax. Then you'll want to add some bow motion. You can have them start with the flat hair. You can have them start with the tilted hair. It doesn't really matter which, but eventually I like to do a combination of the two and I like to do something that I call bow hair rolls. I just have them start with their bows on the open D string and I have them tilt their bows and I really have them exaggerate the tilted bows to where they're only using a few bow hairs. Then I do four counts down and I have them flatten the bow hair out 
and then four counts up, and I have them tilt the bow hair again, again exaggerating to that extreme point. And this is what it should look like. So what I also like to do is do the reverse of this exercise just to get the students thinking. You know, it might not be as practical, but I like to have them start with the flat hair, and as they go towards the tip, I have them tilt the bow hair and then flatten it back out as they get to the frog. And this is what it should look like. I found that after using this exercise in my class for a couple weeks, it helps my students gain an awareness of how much bow hair they're using, so at least they can have the option to use more or less depending upon what's called for in the music. For cello and bass, they'll tilt the bow hair using their bow weight more rather than using the extensions to flatten the hair and neutral wrist. But I have them do this anyway along with the other students because cello and bass players tend to overextend, especially at the frog, and it helps them to create that mind-body connection so they can keep the wooden part of the bow up and the hair part down. And last but not least, I want to address the German bow for basses. The strings on the bass are heavy and bass players primarily play with flat hair, but for German bow players, the mechanics are completely different from the French bow. I've got an incredibly talented student in my orchestra who can shed some more light on this topic. Her name is Christine Kim. She's been playing the double bass for four years, and we got her all-state results back a couple weeks ago, and guess what? She ranked fifth overall in the state of Texas, so she knows what she's talking about. And here's what Christine has to say about the German bow. Uh, hey guys, my name is Christine Kim, and I am a double bass player, and I'm also a German bow player. Um, there's a huge difference between French bow and this German bow and I would like to explain you guys like the basic techniques that is really important for German bow players. So first, um, I want to talk about um, the bow rotation, which is like how much bow hair you need to use to have a good concentrated sound. So. What you have to do is, this is how you hold the German bow, like right here, and feel like you're shaking your hands with someone, but a little like a awkward way. So you just like have this directly into like this, and then you just like slightly hold like this. Um, do not like grab like this, just like no tension, just relax. So now you have to like put this bow on the string and do not let this fingers go inside here because it will be really um, awkward and it will be really hard to make a very good um, sound. So to have a good concentrated sound it is really important to have as much to bow hair um, to be on the string so this is why I have my hands like this instead of doing like this then or else like the only bow hair I can use is just like the side here, which is not good. So try to like make your hand focus like this and then just try to make a very good full concentrated sound. That this is very important, like a big loud. And like if you use like the side of the bow, then it will make a really soft and like very weak sound which is very not ideal so like instead of using the bow like this try to like rotate your hand this way so, like make this side go like to the front so you can have a good concentrated sound awesome stuff christine 
All right, thanks for watching. I hope that you found this content helpful and maybe you can try some of these exercises in your classroom. I'm always interested to hear how people do things differently. So if you have a different way of teaching this or if you've modified or adapted this for a specific person, I'd really like to hear about it in the comment section below. And I'm sure other people would like to know different ways of doing things as well. So please consider sharing. Thanks for participating and thanks for watching. See you next time.